between zombies and technology revolves around the issue of what it means to be human. If flesh is the issue, then certain theorists like Stellark believe that augmenting flesh or redesigning the body is the way out of our predicament. The word technology comes from the Greek word techne, which means art or skill. Techne are the principles or methods employed in making something. The English word technical comes from the Sanskrit word taxon, which means to construct or to weave. The first human technologies included weaving things together. The word technical is also traced back to the old High German word dessa, which means axe or hatchet. In addition to weaving, the first human technologies involved cutting to set things apart and to use them anew. The first technologists were the ones who invented axes, hatchets, and stone tools and carved out their world. We should not think that these prehistoric people were different from us. The world we live in is a result of their innovation in thinking. With our technology, we carve out a world that they began carving for us. They carved their world with axes, and we carve our world with lasers, electronics, and fiber optics. Technology is neutral. It is neither good nor bad. The person using technology can either be enslaved or liberated, can either become human or turn into a zombie without thought. Philosophy teaches us that we can be real human beings, and not simply operators of machines, who end up becoming machines, or worse, zombies, who have forgotten what it means to be human. Stellark, a theorist and artist from Australia, argues that the human body has become obsolete. Its form is not adequate, and it is ill-equipped to deal with its environment. He thinks that the body is neither very efficient nor very durable. The body easily breaks down. The body malfunctions and fatigues. It can only survive weeks without food, days without water, and minutes without oxygen. Zombies show us the reality of a body that breaks down and quickly decays. Stellark places an interesting twist on the zombie concept. It is not as if zombies are something other than us. We are already zombies. Our very biology reveals the predicament of death and decay to us. Stellark's answer to the decaying, diseased, zombie body is a total redesign based on technological innovations. In his words, it is no longer a matter of perpetuating the human species by reproduction, but of enhancing the individual by redesigning. The problem with the human species is that we are never satisfied with how we are, and therefore we seek to modify ourselves constantly. This modification is driven through a prosthetic and mimetic process. In terms of the prosthetic, we add things, devices, inventions to our body to augment our reality. The prosthetic is something which is added to the flesh. It is an artificial device that places us in front of a new world. Think here of tools, devices, inventions. In terms of the mimetic, we imitate other beings to extend our reach of the world and universe. Through our technology, we can stay underwater like a fish or fly through the air like a bird, for example. But not all transformations are desirable. Technology can be life-saving in terms of medical advances, but it can also be life-denying. Philosophers such as Martin Heidegger and Jean-Francois Lyotard have shown that we have lost control over the technology we use. Heidegger's word for this loss of control over the technology we create is called enframing. With our knowledge, we invent a computer, but this same computer becomes the center of our world. We use it to communicate, to write, to draw, to draft, and to calculate. The computer that promised us more free time now takes away all of our time and zooms it away. 
It controls us to the extent that we are controlled by the very thing we have invented. The technology we thought would liberate us and frames us or takes away our freedom. The technology we thought would give us freedom turns us into unthinking zombies. To be human means to be on the earth as a mortal. We are human insofar as we dwell. To dwell also means to cherish, to protect, to preserve, to care for what is human. And yet, have we gone astray? We go astray when we wander from our humanity, when we no longer want to be human, when we no longer want to dwell on earth. As far as I know, human beings are the only beings who allow their inventions to control them. For Stellark, the issue is clear. As long as we remain biological beings, we are inadequate and in the process of becoming zombies. His solution is a technological redesign. He writes, with fertilization now occurring outside the womb and the possibility of nurturing the fetus in an artificial support system, there will technically be no birth. And if the body can be redesigned in a modular fashion to facilitate the replacement of malfunctioning parts, then technically there would be no reason for death, given the accessibility of replacements. Death does not authenticate existence. It is an outmoded evolutionary strategy. The body need no longer be repaired, but simply have parts replaced. Stellark wants to use technology in order to redesign the human being. He thinks that this is a way beyond death. But is he not simply adding more zombification into the problem of what it means to be human? Has technology made us into mindless zombies, where we are controlled by signals, pulses, and networks? Have our digital lullabies, as the film states, really led to a digital lobotomy? A breakdown of our technological order really reveals how vulnerable we can become. Once we begin to rely fully on our devices and inventions, when catastrophe strikes, the disaster is amplified because we no longer know how to live in the natural world.